welcome along to Amazonia. My name's Amanda and I'm bringing you our next session in our online learning about the tropical rainforest. So today I'm, I'm starting off in an enclosure uh, with some of our little monkeys. Now we are going to focus today on the next layer of the rainforest, the next section as we climb up into the trees and find the different animals. And the third layer up, if you remember last week we looked at the understory layer, well, the third layer and the next one up from there is called the canopy layer. And as the name suggests, the canopy layer is the roof of the rainforest. So the trees in the rainforest are extremely tall. I mentioned this earlier on in the series, much, much taller and thinner to trees we see in the UK. Oh, I've got them jumping on me, wondering where their food is. Um, they are much, much taller than the trees in the UK. So. For that reason, at the bottom of the rainforest, it's very dark and gloomy because the light can't penetrate through the trees. But as you get higher up and certainly in the canopy layer, it's much brighter. It's full of much more life as well. So the canopy layer is the roof of the rainforest, very, very bushy, the tops of the trees. And for that reason, you get most of the life living there. So you get approximately 70% of all the animals choosing to live in the canopy layer because it's a perfect layer for them. It will have shelter for them. It'll have the rain, the sunshine, everything that they need. So I'm in, I, hope, I don't know if you can see them jumping around behind me. I'm in our common marmoset enclosure today. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to introduce you to these guys in a sec. I'm going to be feeding them a little bit of their favorite food as well and explain about that. And then we're also going to head into the handling room and meet a smaller creature as well. Um, nothing like a monkey. So we're going to meet a, a couple of different animals today. So first of all, let me introduce you. We've got four marmosets in here. We've actually got two sets of twins. So it's a little family group. And when the adults have offspring, it is um, usually the case that they will always have twins. So that's not unusual for us to have twins in here. So these ones, they're about three to four years old at the moment. Um, they can live usually until about 16 years old in captivity, often longer because um, they don't have the predators. Uh, they've got veterinary help on side, etc., etc. So often with animals, captivity life can be a lot longer than um, all the threats that they face in the rainforest. Now, these little monkeys would be found in South America in the Amazon rainforest. Now, naturally, they were originally found in northeastern Brazil, but as their name suggests, common marmosets, they've actually spread through a lot of other areas and a lot of other countries of South America as well now. So they're a lot more further, further spread than just northeast Brazil. So these little monkeys, how are they well adapted to the rainforest? Well, they are monkeys, which we all know are very good at climbing and jumping. You can probably see them in behind me now, jumping around branch to branch, jumping on me occasionally, probably wondering why I'm in here and not feeding them yet. And they're very well adapted because of that, their jumping abilities and climbing abilities. But also, like we've said with our previous animals in the sessions, they're very good camouflage colours. So these little marmosets are predominantly like a, a, a grey brown, um, also like white flecks on their bodies. Very, very good colours for hiding in the trees. And when they're moving around very quickly in the trees, it is very hard just to focus on them and find them as well. So they're very, very agile. They've got great tails, which helps them balance um, and their colours for great camouflage. Now here, I don't know if you see this one just behind me here. Um, see his long tail hanging down. Now, our monkeys in Amazonia, they don't have prehensile tails. This would mean that their tail can hold on to things alone. So they might be able to dangle from their tails. Our monkeys can't do that. So they just use their tails for balance um, as they're jumping around the trees, very important. Otherwise they might wobble and fall out of the trees. So very important, they just use that tail for balancing. Now something else that they've got very special and, and very useful for their survival in the rainforest is how their teeth are. Now they've got very special incisors um, and those teeth, they are able to gnaw through the tree trunks. You might see on the branches here, lots of like 
holes and areas that have been gnawed. There's loads and loads of holes over the branches where the marmosets have gnawed through the tree and basically this is what they would do in the wild. Now the branches in here don't have anything within them. A live tree would have tree sap, the sticky syrupy liquid inside a tree trunk. These monkeys naturally are gnawing through the tree branches. Um, however, we have to make up sort of an artificial tree sap, specially designed for marmosets, which we give them every single day. So the marmosets, um, tree sap, the tree gum, is an integral part of their diet. It's really, really important. Um, <laughs> got one right, oh, very close up there. <laughs> Don't pee on it though. So we've got one hogging the camera now. Um, probably not with its best end, but uh, here we go. Nice shot. Excuse me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so daily we give them this tree sap um, or substitute tree sap, which they absolutely love. And I'm going to be um, pop popping a bit on the branches now for them to hopefully come a little bit closer for you to see them. Um, and they can have it as their, their daily part of their diet today. So part of their diet, and this is very important for the marmosets. Oh, there we go is what we call marmoset gum and this is a substitute for tree sap now the common marmosets have very special teeth and jaws which allow them to gnaw through tree trunks and eat the tree sap so we have to replicate their diet as best we can um, for their health and well-being so we give them this tree sap every single day it makes up a, it does make up a huge part of their diet and in the wild it's a huge part of their diet along with things like insects, small animals, fruits, vegetables, berries. So they, they've got quite a, a wide range of things in their diet. This one's hogging it now. Um, let me get, pop some over there. Um, but the tree gum is, is very, very important. Um, it's very important for the, like their digestive health as well. So sometimes they, they get overexcited at this. They like they do uh, squabble and fight over it. Sometimes it's certainly one of their favourite foods. And we also mix in special uh, nutrient supplements into the gum as well. Um, so we put some calcium powder in with it today, and that just helps give them extra calcium to keep keep them having nice strong bones, which is important. Now you'll see these marmosets. They've got these little white ear tufts. Um, that's just a, a common marking on these guys and like I was saying they're camouflage colours they're mainly a grey but they've got these flecks of brown white um, and they'll, they'll often live in groups maybe up to like 15 individuals in a group as well so when they're all huddled together uh, they can a look out for each other look after each they're very sociable animals being monkeys so they, they look out for each other stay in their own groups stay in their own areas they don't want to get on any other monkey's nerves by crossing their boundaries. Um, so they can live well together in their groups. You want to stay there? As well as camouflaging together as well. Okay, so as I finish off feeding these guys, uh, we are next going to head into our handling room where we're going to meet a smaller animal, a slimier animal, um, but very cute, I think. Um, so we're going to go in there and meet another animal um, from a different part of the world and have a little chat about it, meet it closer and we'll also mark on our map these little guys that we've met just now. Okay, so here we are in the handling room again, about to meet our second creature of the session. But before that, let's head back to our world map because we've just met the common marmosets. So let's have a look and see where they would be from. Um, if you remember, I said South America, Northeast Brazil mainly. So just um, sort of the top right corner here, let's stick this picture of a common marmoset there. So there we go. Now we're gonna go around the other side or, or the other end of this picture of the world map 
over here to Australia. So Australia is a really diverse country of all sorts of habitats, environments. You've got lots of desert areas and you've, you've got all the ocean life around, the uh, tropical reefs, and you've also got tropical rainforests, which is obviously where we're going to go to. So we are going to meet an animal that would live in the canopy layer of the tropical rainforests there. Very, very good at climbing because they've got very special feet. And she is a little bit slimy. Um, she's very cute, I think. And she is called Chub. You will see why we call her Chub. Um, Chub is a white tree frog. So let me just uh, bring Chub over for you to meet and I shall tell you all about her. So here we have Chub. Um, you see, she's pretty big, nearly the size of my hand, in fact. And Chub is a white tree frog. Not named because of her colour, because she's not white. She's a very dark, browny colour. But she's named after the scientist that first ever discovered her in the wild. Often animals are named after who's maybe found them or the areas they were found, etc. So Chub here is a female white tree frog. And the name tree frog because, like I've said, she would live really, really well high up in the trees and she loves the tropical rainforests. They thrive there because they love the heat and humidity like the other animals. Now, if I hold her here just on my hand, I'll see if I can get a shot. Have a look at her feet. Now, this is one of the great adaptations she's got for surviving in the rainforest because you think of a frog, certainly frogs in the UK, we wouldn't see climbing the trees. So it does sound a little bit odd that these frogs might be able to climb really well, but it's because of their strong legs and these sticky little toe pads that they've got. So here, they're just like little suctions really, little round pads, very, very sticky, able to take the weight of even a large frog like this one. So she can climb really well on all four of her feet, on every toe, she's got these sticky toe pads. So she's able to climb really well, and believe it or not, in the canopy layer of the rainforest, you will get pools of water. Now, I've not touched on the plants of the rainforest much yet, but in the rainforest, you get plants called bromeliads. Now, bromeliads will grow attached to other trees, what we call epiphytes. It means they'll attach and live quite happily on other branches. And bromeliads, the shape of them, let me just sit her down here a little sec. The shape of them grows around a bit like a cup. So when it rains, which it does a lot in the rainforest, these cups form little pools of water, but very high up in the trees. So animals like the tree frogs can dip in there if they want to cool down, have a little soak. They do shed their skin time to time, so it helps ease that off as well. And it's just a perfect place also for them to breed when they want to spawn and lay eggs. They've got little pools of water to use for that. So. As much as it might sound a bit strange, they've got everything they need right at the top of these very tall rainforest trees. Now also, I've mentioned the colour of her, being this very dark browny colour, she's extremely good at camouflaging, like we've said with a lot of animals we've met. So she blends in really well, again, to the, not to the maybe the green leaves at the moment, but certainly to the tree trunks, the branches, she's the same colour. Now saying that, she might from time to time be able to blend in with the colourful leaves because she can actually change the colour of her skin gradually. So depending on her environment, if she's suddenly in a, a, very, a more open area or where it's a lot lighter or a lot greener with the leaves, she can, her skin has got the ability to actually gradually change and become that same colour to where she's sat. So very, very clever, um, amazing that she can do that because it means wherever she is, pretty much, she's going to be camouflaged and safe from predators that might spot her, might try and catch her and have her for dinner. Now, talking about dinner, what does she like to eat? Well, it's got to be something that is found also at the tops of the trees because where the animals live, ideally, they want to live there all their lives. They don't want to be moving around um, a massive area just to find some food. So she needs to be able to find all her food up in the canopy layer. So she would like to feed on mainly lots and lots of insects. So here in Amazonia, we feed her crickets, large crickets. Um, we also can give her things like waxworms as well, uh, a little bit smaller, but very tasty for her. 
Um, all these all these insects they have very good protein levels as well which is good for her health and when she's ready to catch the insect she'll, she'll probably stay very very still while she's on the lookout for some food as it walks along it has to be alive otherwise she won't know it's there and won't really be able to grab it as it walks along she'll very quickly stick her sticky tongue out and grab it into her sticky mouth and swallow it with the help of her two big eyeballs. So frogs use their eyeballs to push the food down from their mouth towards their stomach. So she's got these huge eyeballs there poking out the top of her head. Um, sounds a bit gruesome, um, but she does it very quickly in a split of a second, catch the food, blink, and pushes it down to be digested. These frogs as well have got a very good appetite as well so they'll often catch insect after insect eat quite a lot of food hence the size they can get as well so um yes yeah, as being a female she is bigger than what the male frogs tend to get to as well um but yeah this is a this is quite common sometimes to see these white tree frogs um, on the bulkier side she's very active today as well um these are really they are nocturnal creatures the white tree frogs so for her to be this active in the day is a bit unusual but it's good because you can see her moving around you can see her really strong muscular legs there as well which tuck up here against her body but she's able she is able to spring and jump she doesn't do huge jumps really because of the size of her um, but she can climb really well as well very strong sturdy legs there now, like I said just before bringing Chub out, she is from the Australian rainforests. So if we find the picture of, <laughs> picture of the white tree frog here, we're going to place it over here on Australia. Again, she's taking up the entire country. Uh, she would just be found in the forests. Um, so that is Chub, our white tree frog. And that brings me to the end of the session on the canopy layer. So I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Hope you've learnt something, some fun facts and enjoyed watching the animals too. Uh, remember, we do have activity sheets to go alongside our rainforest topic. So please have a look at those, download those and you can do those in your own time. Um, if you've any questions, please fire them along in our Facebook page and we'll, we'll try and answer them for you. Um, otherwise, I hope you'll tune in next week where we're going to look at the emergent layer. So we're going to be going right to the tops of the trees and learning about what lives up there. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.